just the beginning. Of course, here at the Weather Channel, we do have the experts, the people. We also have been on this for more than a week looking at this storm and the potential of it. So with that, I want to go to Storm Specialist Carl Parker. And Carl, I want you to give everybody an update on what we're looking at, of course. But also, if you would at some point address my concern, when we're going to see that wind shift here in this part of North Carolina, Moorhead City. And that's something that concerns me as we get closer to high tide tonight, which you can just think about it. It's going to be around midnight tonight. It's going to be around noon tomorrow, the high tides, and then again, yep. midnight again tomorrow night. So, Carl, I also want to ask you what you think about that. When are we going to see that wind change to more of an onshore situation where we are here? Well, I think that's really going to be more uh, overnight as the center of the storm gets closer to the coast. And uh, there are the latest stats on the storm, a 100 mile per hour category two hurricane. There's been some uh, chatter about the idea of a storm of this nature, a category two or a category one, and not being that big of a deal and nothing could be farther from the truth. We're talking about an incredibly serious situation here because this storm is so large and because it's so slow moving and the impacts are going to last four days and let's take a look at the radar and show you what's going on very well formed storm here on the radar uh, certainly not weakening at this time uh, in the radar presentation we see a couple of different uh, eye walls here there's a uh, the main eye wall right in there that is a partial eye wall and then there's a sort of a secondary eye wall and within that some very strong winds a buoy that is just offshore relative to Ocracoke Island gusting to 72 look at this buoy right here closer to to that main eye wall gusting to 112 miles per hour. That is what is going to be coming on shore later tonight, overnight tonight, and uh, into the early morning hours as that center of the storm moves near Cape Fear and also towards Wilmington, North Carolina. So again, you've got this feature right in there and uh, winds over 100 miles per hour in that partial eye wall there. But then there's the secondary eye wall that is now coming in. And along with that, we are seeing hurricane force winds and also very heavy rain. We talked a lot about the heavy rain and when you've got these banding features that are just not moving much at all, this is the last hour, there's barely been any movement in this area around Moorhead City and Newport. So a flash flood warning for Carteret County with three to six inches of rain coming down already and you've got a lot more on the way. Also a flash flood warning off to the north of that. That is for Craven, Jones and Pamlico counties. That's going until 2 30 in the morning and this is a look at the total rainfall this large area is where we have seen three to five inches already with some pockets over five inches so this is just the beginning of a very very long duration rain event catastrophic flooding is likely there in coastal areas of North Carolina and South Carolina and farther inland as well towards that 95 corridor. This is about as serious as it gets. We're looking for rainfall totals that could be among the highest that we have ever seen here in North and South Carolina maybe upwards of 24, maybe even 30 inches by the time it's all said and done. And it's not just there. Obviously, a lot of problems near the core of that storm, but then that heavy rain is going to make it up into more mountainous terrain in western parts of South Carolina and also western North Carolina. And that is also going to uh, increase the flood threat in those areas in some major metros, including Asheville and Charlotte and also Greenville in South Carolina. We want to get back out to Chris in Moorhead City and uh, Chris, uh, uh, just amazing how the wind has already gotten going here. The center of the storm is still well offshore, and this is really a testament to just how large this wind field is, this area of strong winds. Yeah, and, and we're getting a, a big gust right now, Carl. And when you, you look at this, uh, it, it's a reminder that if you are not, if you have not evacuated, if the government officials are saying you got to shelter in place this is something especially now it's after dark you do not want to be in it you got to shelter in place and and something else that that i thought was very uh telling to just the seriousness of this this whole situation that we're dealing with and that was from the emergency managers here in north carolina saying that you do need to shelter in place if you haven't done so and in regards to the flooding they say, don't go to your attic if the flooding starts getting high. 
unless there is a secondary way to get out of there. That just tells you, I think, the seriousness of this, uh, the potential that people might have to resort to that sort of a thing. And, and right now, we're seeing this heavy rain and the winds. What we want to do right now is go to Dave Malkoff, who's joining us in Charleston, South Carolina. And Dave, what's the word there? I know here it's evacuation, it's too late. Can you tell me what, what the deal is there? And Chris, it's really interesting to see the difference between your live shot and our live shot. Where you have chaos, we have calm. But if you look on the radar, you can see that long outstretched arm of this hurricane. The first big band is on its way down here to this area where people have evacuated, mostly people who were in vacation homes and they have evacuated. But there are still some people who are in uh, their own home who are local here and also in the surrounding towns. They were boarding up all day today and people were putting plywood over the windows. They were putting sandbags in front of their stores. You can still hear that there are some vehicles around here. We drove through an apartment 